and the audience? <laughs> Not now. Uh, I have a pinched knee. Is everything okay with me, yes? Aqua Farmer is must, normal guys say. Hello everyone, my name is Anton Pelcher, I'm an engineer and I've been constructing fish farms for more than 10 years. As you see, I'm sitting on a wonderful pipe. It means today, we're going to talk about pipelines at a RAS farm. We're going to discuss the pipe's materials, their functions, what kind of sections of pipelines are used in RAS and what pipe and elements can be installed. Also, I will tell you how to choose the right diameter, the right material and lots of other interesting things. So, let's go! By the way, it's not only about the pipelines, but also about piping elements and shut off valves that control the flow of water inside the pipeline. Well, we'll start with a question for experts. What do you think of the length of the pipelines for RAS with a capacity of 100 tons of trout per year? Well, probably the ones who know a little bit about the topic can state for sure that there are a lot of pipes in RAS. There are three answers to that question. The first is 100 meters, the second is 300 meters, and the third is 2 kilometers. We'll figure out the right one at the very end of the video. Therefore, be sure to watch the whole video and you find out how many pipes are really needed for the complete RAS piping. Well, we'll start with a little theory. What are the types of pipes? What materials are used for RAS pipelines? The first is polypropylene. Probably everyone has heard of it. Many people are using polypropylene pipes for heating apartments and houses. These are white pipes. You can easily recognize them. They are assembled with a special soldering iron. Many household pipelines are assembled from them. Is it good or bad to use them in RAS? That's the question. I'll tell you, we don't use them. Practically, few people engaged in fish farming use them. Let me explain why. They are less convenient to assemble and are less aesthetic. Also, they have very serious diameter restrictions. Polypropylene pipes with a large diameter of 300 to 400 mm are extremely hard to find. They also have one significant disadvantage. They have very significant wall thickness. It means if a diameter is 160 mm, the wall thickness will be huge. This affects the inner diameter of the pipe, that is, it consumes a lot of space. Also, large diameter polypropylene pipes assembling is quite a difficult task. So, all this together suggests that polypropylene pipes are not very desirable to be used for RAS. However, if it's about some kind of mini RAS systems, why not? If you know how to solder polypropylene pipes and don't know what to do with PVC, you can use them. The problem is assembling complex pipe and elements. The second type of pipes that are used in RAS is HDPE pipes. HDPE means polyethylene pipes. I think you've seen them many times. They are often used for large water collectors. For example, there is a trench somewhere in the city, and a large HDPE pipe fits there. Its diameter is 500 mm, it's black, usually with a blue stripe. At least, it's like that in my country. So, these are good and reliable pipes. They can also be used. They have very significant advantages. Usually, they are cheaper than large PVC pipes, but once again I refer to my country only. And basically, they are cheaper than small ones. Their disadvantage is assembly. It's more complicated. Since PVC pipes are glued between each other, HDPE pipes need to be welded. It's a little more difficult from the assembly point of view. This pipe's diameter is 300 to 400 mm. They're huge and it's really difficult to assemble them. So, special equipment is used for welding them. So, the second option is HDPE pipelines. The third one is of course PVC pipes. To be honest, I still continue to use PVC pipes, although I also used polypropylene and HDPE ones. Why PVC? There are two kinds of PVC. The first is PVC for sewage and the second one is for tanks. I use sewage pipes for draining system. Let me show you. What is that? They are very convenient for assembling gravity flow lines. They have good turns, it's simple to assemble them and nothing leaks. Since the pressure in the system is minimal, they have thin walls and they are not expensive. So, sewage PVC pipes are wonderfully simple in assembly. As for pressure systems, the water is already coming from pumps. For that reason, we usually use pressure PVC or PVC for fish holding tanks. I'm sitting on it right now. The pipe is grey. They are often used for piping of tanks and equipment. 
Despite the fact that they have slightly different piping elements, it's possible to use a special glue for PVC. Well, many have heard about it. At the same time, it's very convenient to assemble them. No specialized equipment is needed. They are very easy to assemble. First apply the glue on a dry surface, and then the pipes can be sticked together. Therefore, this is one of the secrets of glue and PVC pipes. They are first assembled without any glue, then they are simply smeared with glue, and then you clench them hard. It looks beautiful and it's smooth and clear. Well, they are a little more expensive than HDP, but anyway, it's a good choice in order to assemble a really safe system. There are, of course, other pipes, like stainless steel ones. Stainless steel is super expensive in my region. Then why use them? That's the question. If you don't use these pipes for food production, then they are probably not needed at all. There are metal pipes, but they are corroding permanently. Cast iron pipes are heavy, they are also susceptible to corrosion, and plastic is not corroding at all. Therefore, there are of course various pipes that are used for different purposes. For example, asbestos cement pipes are used in municipal water supply and drainage, but they are not good for RAS. The reason is that RAS has a very large and complex piping. You need to carefully pass through different locations, points, connect pipes in large sections. Eventually, it's becoming unesthetic, impractical and inconvenient. This applies to pipelines materials. Now let's talk about where RAS pipelines are used. First, they are used for fish holding tanks drainage system, for mechanical water treatment system and the gravity flow of water inside the cleaning system. Second, they are used for water return, water recirculation to the fish holding tanks, so the water is already treated and it flows from the pumps back to the tanks. The third is air, aeration of biofilters. The fourth is oxygen. The fifth is additional pipes such as for ozonation system, flushing pumps of drum filters, and the sixth is the pipes for utility lines. This includes the supply of water, the supply of heat and the drainage. So, these are six pipes categories, and now we will look at them closer. So, what are we waiting for? Let's continue! Well, let's talk in more detail about the pipelines in RAS, and we'll start with the drainage pipeline. Here it is so beautiful and red. It starts from here, since this is the last point of the system, and here starts the drainage to our water treatment system. The pipe diameter is 160 mm, it's orange, and it's made of PVC. It fits into the tank drain point, then it's mounted on metal brackets, and then it carries non-treated water towards the water treatment system. Each time another drain from the tank is added to this collector. Here it's already transitioning from 160 mm at once to 200 mm or even 250 mm. And why that? Because the more streams are added to the drained water, the more we need the diameter of the pipe, since it's necessary to maintain a certain speed of water movement in this pipe. Here we already have a collector with a diameter of 250 mm, and the diameter doesn't change after the third fish holding tank, it changes after the fourth tank and transits to 315 mm. And here comes the collector. By the way, the speed of water flow in the drainage pipeline of the tank should be around 1 meter per second on average. The diameter of the pipelines is generally selected based on the above parameters. Let's go further. That pipe is still 315 mm. Let's get closer to the tanks. There are already 5 or 6 tanks. And here we have 4 more. And so, then we have a transition to 400 mm. And this is the largest diameter. Actually, 600 or at least 500 cubic meters are going through this 400 mm pipe. Just for you to understand, these pipes are glued. So, technicians who assemble such pipes are required to have a really high qualification in order to work with such large diameters. And here, there is one T connector. Just for example, one T costs around 300 US dollars. Its diameter is 400 mm. There is a pressure pipe on the top. We will take a look at it later. Here we have a drain collector. By the way, there is a misconception that it's necessary to install pipes with a slope. This is not entirely true. It's not a sewage pipe, it's completely filled with water. According to the law of communicating vessels, water from the tank impacts on the water in the pipes, so they can fit perfectly horizontally and it will work fine. Here is one pipe that carries non-treated water to the drum filter. This is all about the drainage pipes. 
Water from the tanks is drained through a collector which is 400 mm in diameter. Around 500 to 600 cubic meters per hour are passing through it at a speed of 1 meter per second. So the pipe is also 400 mm. What does it mean? All the water gets to the water treatment unit. Then it's completely treated both mechanically and biologically. Then it's disinfected and saturated with oxygen and returned to the tanks by pressure pumps. So, this pipe, which is grey on top, is just the same return pipe. This water that is pumped through it into tanks is already treated and fully prepared for fish to live and to grow in. The first thing. Why are the pipes different? This one is orange and this one is grey. These pipes are slightly different type, despite the fact that the material is the same and both pipes are glued together. Nevertheless, this drainage pipe is designed for semi-gravity systems and the upper pipe is designed for pressure systems. In this case, the pressure is low, which is up to 1 bar. The lower pipe generally has the pressure of 0.2 bar maximum inside. Therefore, under a pressure of up to 1 bar, the water returns back to the tanks, and here we use PVC pressure pipes. It's best to use them. And here comes the second question. Why does the pipe have a smaller diameter? You probably noticed that we use 400 mm pipes at the bottom and 315 mm at the top. Why that? It's very simple. If the standard speed of water movement in the lower pipe is 1 meter per second, inside the upper one it is 1.5 to 2.5 meters per second. So, we can fit a pipe of a smaller section. Naturally, it's cheaper and easier. Therefore, we have installed 315 mm pipes. It works fine, and of course it was tested many times in other systems. Let me show you where it is laid. Well, the pattern is the same. That is, we're now going back to the last tank. The pipes are 315 mm. There are also T outlets for each fish holding tank. A part of the flow equal to approximately 10% follows to each tank. Here is another T. I think it costs about the same as 400 mm because it's a pressure one. By the way, you can see joint. The connection of the pipes and everything is really well connected. The pipes are installed with the use of these metal brackets. Here is another tank output. Each tank output is approximately the same. And we now begin the transition to a smaller diameter. Why is this necessary? It allows us to reduce the section because the flow is reducing as well. Now we have a transition to a smaller diameter. Here is an adapter ring. How is this transition made? Come Come on, I'll show you. There is an adapter ring, and we have already changed the pipeline diameter from 315 mm to 250 mm. This one is already 250 mm. It's easier to install and it's cheaper. Since we have already taken four tanks into account, we have much less flow left, almost half. Then we have the 250 mm pipe. Let's go further. And now the diameter is already 200 mm. The 200 mm pipe is starting here, and it also transits to a smaller diameter. I think you've seen it applied everywhere. This principle is used in ventilation systems and in water supply systems. The smaller the flow, the smaller the pipe diameter can be. Here we are, and the outputs are the same. Outputs are 110 mm everywhere. Here we are moving to the 160 mm pipe. Well, then we go further, and this is the last tank. The diameter is changed to 110 mm. That is, the same diameter that is actually used for the tank's input. Well, this is all that concerns pressure pipe lines. And now let's go and take a look at piping elements and shut-off valves. What do they look like and how do they work? Let's talk a little bit about what we need in addition to pipelines in order to assemble RAS pipelines. Well, where do we start? Let's start with the piping elements or fittings. This is a standard pressure T. It is 200 mm in diameter with a possibility to adapt to 110 mm. So with the point of connection to the tank, it's 100 mm. Here, as you can see, is the transition to 160 mm. Here is an adapter ring and an adapter coupling. Everything is glued together. That is, this pipeline is already tightly glued and it cannot be disassembled. What is good about glue? The fact that no specific equipment is needed. You just need a certain qualification. It's also a T. As you can see, the pipe elbow is 90 degrees. Sometimes we use 45 degrees. Here is the shut-off valve. This is a butterfly valve. It rotates 90 degrees and completely cuts off the flow. It can be turned partially, for example, by 45 degrees. So, it's possible, even if it's not very convenient, to regulate the supply to the tank. But in fact, it's a valve that is designed to either completely shut off or completely open the flow in a pipeline. I'll show you the shutter separately now. Look, this is a butterfly valve. This is flanged. There are flanges with bolts on both sides. The bolt passes through the valve, and two flanges need to be connected together. The PVC pipe comes in, and then it's glued. How does the valve work? 
It's also called a butterfly because it looks like a butterfly. Inside you can see the disc. It rotates when I press it and turn it. As you can see the disc opens. It creates minimal resistance. It works great. The diameter of the valve is 200 mm. So it will fit perfectly into this pipe. Well, let's look at the pipe and elements a little closer. Since we have a huge amount of them in the system, as I said, this is the standard 90 degrees pipe elbow. PVC pressure pipes, the ones that are grey. Basically, it's 110 mm diameter. This is the adapter ring. It's inserted into the socket. For example here, and another pipe of a smaller diameter is inserted into it. This is a standard T. It doesn't have any rubber bands, doesn't have any special recesses, that is, another pipe comes in very tightly with a glue, and everything is glued well there. There is a 315mm T. So what else do we have here? Let's take a look. There are parts of the flanges, they are used to connect the valve for example. Let's see what else we have here. There are standard switch pipe and elements, as you can see. What the difference? The difference is that there is another bell and there is an elastic band inside. So, this pipe is not designed for glued connection. It's primarily designed so that another pipe just fills tightly onto the rubber bands and it works. Yes, in the sewage system, when the pipes are not fully filled with water, it works. As for RAS, such a scheme works poorly because the pipeline will leak. So, we take out rubber bands from there and connect them with glue. These pipe and elements are better because it's more convenient to mount all drain collectors on them. And here is another type of shut-off valve. In fact, it performs the same function as the butterfly valve. It's a gate valve. Wow, it's so dense. Here I opened it. In fact, there is a blade inside. It goes up and down, blocking the valve. It works differently, but the result is the same. Here it is the same valve, only of a larger section. It's used for pipelines of larger diameter. And here we have a slightly different type of piping element. This is a valve that turns very smoothly. It also opens to 90 degrees and rotates exactly 90 degrees. But at the same time, it turns much more smoothly. It has more possibilities to carefully adjust the flow. Therefore, part of the piping elements and part of the shut-off valves are used exactly like this. And here, as you can see, a standard butterfly valve is used at the output. But here it has a larger cross section there than those I showed earlier. And here are the same butterfly valves which are used for the pumps. This, by the way, is very important. You have to put a check valve because if you turn off the pumps, all this water will flow back. In order to prevent it from flowing back and emptying your pipelines and overflowing your pumping tank, a valve is placed here. It's not easy to see it, but it's there. It doesn't allow the water to flow back. In this case, water flows only upstream the pumps. So, I'm standing near the biofilter now. There are 2.5 meters under. I don't really want to fall there. I'll try to be careful. Here are the air ducts. They're coming from the air blowers. The blowers just haven't been installed at this facility yet. Now everything is in the progress. Here is a collector. If I'm not mistaken, it's 90 millimeters and there are many outputs from it. Each output belongs to its own diffuser. Diffusers are installed at the bottom of this biofilter. So, the air is injected into the pipeline at a pressure of 250 to 300 millibar, and this air enters the diffusers. Here are the valves. In fact, they have not yet been used a lot. These are 40 mm outlets. Basically, there is a ball inside. So, I just turn the flap here. The ball turns and blocks or opens the water feed. The air ducts are made of the same pressure PVC pipes as the supply pipelines. So, everything is quite universal and simple. Drainage pipelines and air supply pipelines are just a part of the piping. 
There are additional auxiliary pipelines that I will show you now. Look here, there is a unit which in fact is an ozonation system and a drum filter flushing system. For example, this pump takes water and feeds it to the ozone retention column in a completely separate circuit, so it doesn't belong to the main rest circuit. Let's go further. This pump creates vacuum to the ejector. An ozone is sucked through the ejector and fed into ozone retention column which provides for ozone dosing. And the last pump is designed to flush the drum filter. It's precious 7 bar, which is very high, but it flushes the drum filter mesh through the nozzles at high pressure with a small flow rate. So, these are separate pipelines. They also take water from the pump and peat and carry it to separate equipment units. I'm not going to show it now, because oxygen pipelines have not yet been installed. But at the same time, an oxygen pipeline will be connected to each oxygenator. The pipes will be made of stainless steel. This pipeline will supply pure oxygen from an oxygen generator, and it's a separate network of pipelines. Let's take a look at heating pipes. These pipes are made of metal. Basically, you can use any material that can be heated to a hot circuit temperature of up to 70 to 80 degrees. If the pipe fits, no problem. Some people use polypropylene for hot water supply and for heat supply. Some people use some other materials. This one is made of steel. Next, this is a makeup water pipe. In RAS, we need to connect pipes from the borehole. In this case, from the water tower to each rest department. In this case, we are using polypropylene pipes. Why not? Small diameter polypropylene pipes for water supply are the most suitable. It's easy to install them without special skills and tools. By the way, I would not even recommend PVC for cold water. I recommend polypropylene, because PVC rubber bands shrink in cold water, and they can start leaking. Well, I'm in cold water, which is below 10 degrees. The last thing I want to cover in this video is the sewage pipes. Standard sewage pipes start from 110 mm in diameter. Eventually, they transit to 200 mm or even 250 mm pipe, since there may be still some kind of salvo discharge from the tanks. Basically, the third pipe, which is installed under concrete, is a standard sewage pipe. That is, we have heating, water supply and sewage pipes. All these are utility lines pipes. They don't relate to rice piping, but they supply it. Any materials can be used for the utility lines pipelines. Well, today we have discussed rice pipelines. We figured out what materials they can be made of and which of them are the most appropriate. I showed you practically all the pipes installed at this rice farm, so that you had a possibility to almost touch and feel all the pipes, piping elements, shut off valves, see them with your own eyes. I hope it was helpful. By the way, do you remember we talked about the length of the pipelines at this particular farm? Probably you have already seen that there are quite a lot of them. Let me tell you the length. There are three options. 100 meters, 300 meters and 2 kilometers. Only the first RAS line out of two has been launched at this farm so far. Therefore, there are about a kilometer of pipelines currently. So, when launching the second RAS line, the farm owners will get another kilometer. Taking the margin of error into account, they will have 2 kilometers of pipes at this farm with a capacity of 100 tons of grow-out trout per year. Yes, it's really a lot, but it's necessary, because the pipes provide for all the vital activity of the facility. There are small pipes starting from 20 mm for oxygenator and ending with pipes of 400 mm in diameter. They are used for the drum filters. Now I have a little bonus for you. You can download a file with the calculation of pipeline diameters following a link in the description to this video. You just enter the water flow rate of your RAS, then the air flow rate to the biofilter, and the calculation is made automatically. You get the recommended diameter of the pipelines. So download and use it. I hope this video was useful, and if so, please hit thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel. This is Anton Pelcher. Goodbye.